Hey everyone, I'm going to be reading a story with you today. We thought it would be a good idea. Uh, you guys have been reading lots at home, but we thought it might be a good idea for our reading this week if I actually read you something. So I'm going to read you a story called A Kite for Moon. It's uh, by an author called Jane Yolan and also uh, another lady called Heidi E.Y. Strempel, which is a cool name for an author. They wrote it together. Uh, and then Matt Fellon has done the illustrations for this book. Uh, if you were in my class last year, you'll remember Jane Yolan wrote the book Owl Moon, which we really enjoyed and we looked at for a couple of weeks. That's a good book to look up if you haven't read it before. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do what I like to do, which is I'm going to talk for a bit first about the book and then I'm actually going to read it to you. So the book, uh, A Kite for Moon, uh, it was written by uh, these authors, like I said before. These authors obviously were very interested in the topic of the moon. What they've done is that the, the book only has really two characters in it. It's got some other people who appear, but really it's only got the two characters, which is the boy on the front and the moon itself. That's something called personification, where an author takes something like an object that's not alive, but they talk about it like it is. So they talk about it as though it is a person who has feelings and can see things uh, and knows things. Uh, and so that's how the, the moon is shown in this book. The author always refers to the moon as her, so or she. So it's called it's like it's like the moon's a character in the story. Uh, the book itself has a few clues to help us understand uh, why the authors wrote it. If I take to the first page, if I can get there to the dedication. You see the dedication there, it says for Neil Armstrong, who showed us the way. Uh, now your parents will probably know, but if you guys don't, you might not have heard of Neil Armstrong. He was the first man to walk on the moon, Neil Armstrong. Um, and so they've dedicated the book to him. Now, that boy is not Neil Armstrong, but Neil Armstrong has inspired the authors to write this story about a boy who goes to the moon. Okay, so they, they've not written a book about Neil Armstrong, but they have used the story of Neil Armstrong to help them write their own story. It's called, that's called inspiration, where you take something real that's happened and it inspires you to write something similar, a similar kind of story. But they're, actually, they're making their own story. So it's about a boy who, by his kite, is sending messages to the moon and all the things that the moon is seeing as she waits many years and then eventually the boy does become an astronaut and he goes to the moon to visit her. And then at the end of the story, I know I'm, I like to do this, sometimes it's good, it helps you understand a story if you've actually looked at the whole thing and then you talk about it, it actually helps you understand the story if somebody talks to you about it. This last part here, uh, we've got the girl uh, at the end of the story, so she's being inspired then to do the same thing that the boy does in the story. She's looking up at the moon with her kite as well. So I'll talk a bit more about that when we get through to the end of the story. But I'll read it now. There is some things I'm going to talk about as I go through, but I'll try and, for the most part, just read it. If any of you have been taught by me before, you do know that sometimes when I'm reading a story, I get really excited and I just like to talk about things. So I'll do my best, but we'll see how we go. Okay? A Kite for Moon. Read that dedication already for Neil Armstrong, who showed us the way. It was morning, and moon sat alone in the sky. The stars were all abed. No one below was singing to her. No one was sending up rockets or writing poems about her. No one was taking her photograph or painting her picture. Moon began to feel terribly sorry for herself. See how it's talking about the moon like she's a person? Down below, a very small boy flying his kite on the beach near his house looked up at Moon. Moon, he called up to her. Don't be sad. He ran as far as he could, all the way to the edge of the water where Moon sat on the horizon. He tried to hug Moon, as his mother did to him whenever he was unhappy. But Moon was too far away. Mm -hmm. 
So he wrote on his kite, promising to come some day for a visit. Then he let go of his kite, sending it up, up, up for moon. Days went by, years. Moon waxed and waned. She counted shooting stars and meteors. She worried about peace down on earth and strange objects whizzing by. She eclipsed. Now waxed and waned talks about, you know, how the moon, when you look at it in the sky, sometimes you can see the full moon, sometimes you can see only a little bit, kind of, that's like a crescent shape. Sometimes it's completely dark and you can't see it. That's Waxing means that it's becoming light again towards a full moon. Waning means that it's going the other way and it's becoming dark. That's what it means when it says that the moon waxed and waned. Many nights, the boy watched moon through a telescope his father had given him. Many days, he sent up a new kite for moon. Red kites, blue kites, green kites, yellow. Some fell back to earth, some disappeared into the sky. I'm not sure if you can see there, but this one, there's a few messages written on them. One of they say, hope you are okay. The messages that the boy is sending up to the moon. And moon watched the boy grow. Every day, the boy studied hard. He learned his large numbers and his small sums. He learned algebra and equations. He learned geometry and tried to square the circle. He learned all about the sky and the moon. He learned to ride a bicycle, drive a car, fly a plane and a rocket. And then one day, when he had learned enough, he went up, up, up in a big rocket ship with a fiery tail. Hello, moon, he said. I've come for that visit. And then the whole world watched. Okay, so you can see that girl there. It's like she's being inspired to do the same thing that the boy did at the beginning of the story as she's looking up, seeing him go to the moon. So that's the end of A Kite for Moon. We'll have some activities for you in the pack to do with this story, but I hope you enjoyed listening to me read it. I miss reading books to you guys, so I'm glad I was able to do it on the camera for you. All right, hopefully I'll see some of you guys soon.